good morning friends it's my pleasure to be a part of uh, this seminar on uh, reference management system and you know very well the importance of research is gaining momentum in these days in all the higher education institutions it so happens that we the teachers at the colleges especially arts and science colleges have started doing momentary kind of work in research thanks to the nac accreditation or mb mb accreditation or such kinds of uh, uh, standardizing agencies so research is gaining importance what is the research basically so you know very well research is a systematic method a scientific method of either discovering or inventing something very new either you try to find out uh, which is already available but not discovered so far or you try to find out something very new the thing which was not existed before so either you take the old concept you apply and try to get something new or you apply an entirely new concept the old concepts which is applied and you get something very new something very a different way of doing the old things of course there is something called serendipity it means uh, accidental discoveries so you don't plan to discover something when you are trying to do a research on a particular topic to find out something instead of what you aimed at you got something else even that is serendipity even that is termed as research and in uh, colleges we undertake different kinds of research activities maybe uh, a student does uh, an assignment uh, pg students are taking up pg course work pg projects mphil students are doing mphil dissertation works and we as a teachers we guide our students in completing their assignments or pg projects or mphil dissertations we ourselves are doing phd thesis or our uh, we are guiding our phd scholars some of us may be doing post doctoral research in our uh, chosen disciplines and uh, as uh, the teachers we always uh, involve ourselves in preparing uh, various research journal articles or uh, we contribute papers in various conferences and we contribute chapters in the edited books we write books and we sometimes we uh, get uh, financial assistance from agencies like tansi or uh, ugc major project ugc minor project or icsr project or sometimes like we get some projects so these are all different dimensions of your uh, research work when you do when you are doing research work maybe starting from you decide the topic you finalize the problem statement and till you do the data analysis find out the suggestions and conclude though your research consist of lost of well defined demarcated areas of work i should say a question appears in front of me is it possible for a researcher to do the entire work on himself or herself without depending on others without borrowing ideas of others without looking at the methods followed by others without concentrating on the findings of others without uh, thoroughly uh, uh thoroughly uh, discussing about the conclusions of other research no it's very difficult you know friends no research is done on an island so every research is interconnected with the researchers which were conducted in the same subject so naturally and obviously when a researcher is doing a research work he or she has to borrow the ideas of others you have to find out what is a related review of literature you should conduct a survey of the literature on related fields you should understand what kinds of studies were conducted previously on my the chosen area of research and you can ask questions sir i had gone through various research works of my uh, related uh, research works i have got something from that and where am i going to use all the contents so dear friends whatever you have taken from others you may be using the content others content borrowed content in three different areas one is introduction when you write an introduction part of your thesis or research work obviously you need to give meaning you need to give definition for some concepts you should give the historical evolution of a particular concept 
that you cannot do by yourself you have to obviously borrow the ideas of others to have your background information and secondly when it comes to review part your review part of your chapter book chapter or a book or your thesis or your journal article you need to critically analyze what were the findings of others how many researchers were conducted already on my own field what were their aims what were the methods they followed what are the data collection instrument they followed and what kind of research design they followed their research work and what did they come to understand and what did they conclude what were their findings see only when you have an exhaustive survey of existing literature uh, you will be able to find out what is a research gap that exists in your field because you are taking up a research work only to fulfill this research gap so that's second part and thirdly after your findings you need to have a section either in your research or in your journal article entitled discussion and that is the area where you are going to project to what extent your findings are in line with others or to what extent your your findings are against the findings of others you need to corroborate and contrast your findings with that of others so either in the introduction part or in the review part or in the discussion part there is no other go you have to borrow the ideas of others fine you can see the introduction part where you bring some statistics about cancer death so obviously you have to take data from somebody those who already done research on that in review section you are uh, uh, concentrating on what is the findings of each and every previous researcher so you have to quote in the review section what is the finding of this particular researcher what about follow law you should uh, very very specifically spell out ah uh, so there is a point which you found in many studies many studies so you can combine all the studies say that uh, these many studies point or focus on this particular topic fine ah uh, maybe in the discussion section you have to spell it our results are similar to okay or uh, our results are consistent with those of dash and dash or unlike previous studies or in contrast to other studies or uh, this corroborates the findings of this confirms the findings of so to what extent your findings are in line or contrast with others fine so in all these three places you need to have the ideas concepts or findings of others you should ask a question sir people say that we should not uh, copy the ideas of others if we copy the ideas then that will result in plagiarism sir but you are telling that for introduction part for review part for discussion part we have to borrow the ideas of others and we have to add their content uh, as a part of our research work yes my dear friends when you are copying the ideas the methods the results the findings the methodologies of others and if you are using them in your research naturally it will lead to plagiarism if you don't do one thing what is that you need to acknowledge that yes i have borrowed the ideas from these many people very boldly very confidently in my research paper i am going to accept i am going to thank that i have borrowed the i have taken the ideas from these many people so only when that kind of acknowledgement is missing only when you fail to attribute to the contributions of others only when you claim that these are the works done by me when actually you have taken the works from others that will lead to plagiarism so what is the best way to get rid of plagiarism you have to acknowledge you have to thank that yes i have taken the ideas from all these people how to thank others that's what the reference management is all about so whatever will be the idea or a concept or a thing or a method or a methodology or findings or suggestions whatever you have taken from others you have to acknowledge you have to give due credit to the original author from whom you have borrowed this particular idea fine then the questions come sir yeah you sir you say that uh, uh, whatever you have to borrow we have to acknowledge a question comes here sir what are the things we have to acknowledge you have to cite 
and what are things need not be acknowledged a question comes here and the first one what needs to be acknowledged is direct quotations whenever you borrow a quotation from others for example something like do or die a quotation when you want the entire quotation exact quotation as such to be taken from a particular person and would like to include the entire quotation as such then that is called direct quotations and direct quotation can be either a smaller one shorter quotes or it can be a longer quotes fine but here remember you are using the exact words of the other for example here i have taken a quotation uh, objective wise the learners native discourse pattern these are the exact words are taken from crunch it is another quotation and here especially the direct quotation when you take from others if it exceeds four sentences or 100 words they say you have to make that direct quotation as a separate paragraph without incorporating any quotation marks see if it's a previous slide i have incorporated the quotations direct quotations within the quotation mark but here i have not added anything instead i have kept the entire quotation as a separate paragraph with the intent both on the left side and on the right side is what this is a longer quotation that quotation but it's a longer quotation fine and secondly we can paraphrase see either you can take the exact words of others or you take others ideas others methods read it understand it and you present it in your own style your own language pattern in your in your own way of constructing sentences and please remember many children have a wrong misconception that sir i have taken others from ideas but i have not copied as such i have written it in my own words will it be a plagiarism yes of course it is a plagiarism if you don't acknowledge even if you paraphrase so what is paraphrase taking the ideas of others and putting it in your own words your own language your own style and even partial paraphrasing is to be acknowledged and see that when you are paraphrasing you are not changing the meaning of the idea what you have taken from others the meaning should be retained fine and you are using your own words but you should acknowledge it properly and apart from that you have to incorporate this paraphrasing as a part and parcel of your discussion so that your argument your discussion gets more validity and third point is summarizing so we talked about direct quotation we talked about paraphrasing and this is third one called summarizing see when you read an article the whole article you understand the gist of it and you prepare a small paragraph to replicate to exactly uh, show the as a, as a mirror of the entire article you are summarizing the entire article in a particular paragraph summarizing summarizing is also an indirect quotation see that even if you summarize you should properly cite this not only these things apart from this if you have taken some tables or graphs or figures or diagrams or images from others even these items are also to be acknowledged for example you are attending a meeting wherein a guest speaker is giving a talk you get some idea from that speaker's uh, deliberation and that idea you make it as a, a research paper even in the case though the idea which was given by the uh, lecturer was not in a print form then also it is a personal communication which you listen to from a lecture even that is to be acknowledged otherwise it will lead to be plagiarism now sir these many things are to be acknowledged but what are things which need not be acknowledged which we not be thank so your own ideas so you got your own ideas your own arguments your own theories your own images your own diagrams your own graphs the results of your own research study you need not acknowledge and secondly the common knowledge the so called the common knowledge so there are certain things which we say common knowledge the sun rises in the east drinking water is essential for a human body this is a common knowledge you need not give any quotation any reference any attribution to these kinds of common knowledge and there are some facts available the facts which are found in many general books textbooks dictionaries encyclopedias 
when you take a fact from these kinds of reference sources, you need not acknowledge. The question comes here, what is the common knowledge? As I told you, the sun rises in the east, drinking water is good. So these things are the common knowledge. You need not give any quote for from whom you have taken this particular kind of information. You need not uh, give any acknowledgement. But please remember, when this common knowledge thing becomes very specific, fact oriented, very opinion oriented, then you should acknowledge it. For example, if you say drinking two liters of water is essential, then you should say who has given this kind of finding. Fine, drinking water is good for health is a common knowledge. But when you say drinking two liters of water is essential, then you should quote from which research article, from which research paper you have found this information. Fine. Then, sir, how can I decide whether a particular concept is a common knowledge or not? Very simple. If it is found in a good number of uh, reference sources, if it's widely accepted point, then it is a common knowledge. Sir, I have, I have a doubt whether a particular thing is a common knowledge or not. I tried my best. I asked my friends. I referred to sources. I was not able to find out. It's very simple. Then you acknowledge it. Okay. Then, the question comes here. Sir, there are certain uh, uh, facts. Uh, you, there's no need to acknowledge it. For example, we say that uh, Ilai Raja is a very good composer of music. There's no need to uh, quote any uh, citation for this. There's no need to acknowledge anything. You need not tell from which article you have found out that Ilai Raja is a good music composer. There's no need. It's a known fact. But, but if you want to say that Ilai Raja is the best composers ever world has seen, it has become an opinion. It is not a fact. It is an opinion given by some other researcher. Then you have to acknowledge this particular point. So please differentiate between facts and opinions. Fine. In case there is any doubt, you please cite it. Then, I have been uh, talking about uh, uh, you take uh, either direct quotations or you take a paraphrase or take a summary, you take a table, you take a graph, you take all these things and you're using it in your research paper. And I say you have to acknowledge it. So what is that? We say you have to give proper citation to the particular source from where you have borrowed the ideas. You have to give proper referencing to the source from where you have borrowed your ideas. So what is referencing? It is a labeling of material that you have taken from others so that the readers will be able to locate the source. See, you are doing a research on artificial intelligence. You have borrowed ideas from 10 research papers. So you should give a label to all these 10 materials so that Tomorrow, your friend is going to read the same research paper and he would be and he should be and he will be able to locate all the 10 sources by himself. Okay. So by referencing, you are acknowledging the ownership of the materials. See, you are born an idea. The idea is not yours. The owner of this idea is somebody else. So you should acknowledge, I'm not the owner. He's the owner. And secondly, it gives you credibility for your research. When a person has done some 100 review of literature in his research article or he has added some 40 research papers in his research paper, research review and he says, oh, what a wonderful research. He has got 100 reviews of literature in his research paper. It was so credible research. And thirdly, the followers will be able to access the same resources by themselves. And fourthly, see, when I say that uh, Mr. X is very good, Everybody may not believe, may not, everybody may not accept. When I say that X is good, okay, I have found out that in 2011, another person did a research and found out that X is good. There is another research in Antarctica which found out that Mr. X is good. So when I'm quoting, when I'm drawing, I am, sub, I am getting support from the fellow researchers. I get all the findings of others and I say that even my finding is the same. That's how you build uh, a kind of strength to your arguments or statements. And basically, referencing to others, acknowledging others, it's a basic research ethics a person has to follow. And in fact, that is the best way of exchanging knowledge. So only when you reference, only when you cite others' work and that particular person's 
idea or theory gets popularized. So you are trying to give recognition to the intellectual work, intellectual idea of others by citing them. So these are various reasons why we have to cite a particular research paper. And what are the methods of referencing? So basically we've got uh, uh, three different methods of referencing. One is in-text referencing and secondly numeric and third one is footnotes. Okay. And uh, basically we say they're all uh, uh, in-text citations. There are three different methods are there. Though uh, you are having an in-text citation, so I mean in-text citation is a, is, a, is a method by which you are quoting the source from where you have taken the idea in the body of your research work itself. Maybe in the introduction place itself or maybe in the discussion section itself or maybe in the review section itself, you say that I have taken this idea from so-and-so. That is called in-text citation or textual citations. At the same time, whatever in-text citations you have, all the in-text citations, you need to prepare either a bibliography or a reference or work cited at the end of your research paper. Fine. Both are two different things. First, let us discuss about in-text citations. The first tale is called as author date system. A system where you make use of author's entry element and the year of publication of the author. This is known as in-text citation, author date system, APA style, Harvard style, MLA style, they all follow this author date system. Fine. When if you are uh, making use of direct quotation, then you may have to include even the page number. If it's not direct quotation, it's only a paraphrasing, it's only a summary, then you can make use of just author's name and year of publication. Fine. For example, I just given a small example. So I have paraphrased here. So I have given only the name of the authors and year of publication. Here I have a quotation, direct quotation. I have not changed anything of the authors. So I have mentioned the author's name and year of publication and the page number also. Fine. And whenever you have got index citations, for example, in your article, you have got 10 index citations. And all the 10 should appear at the end of the article under the heading references in the alphabetical order. So you have used 10 references, 10 intextual citations are there. At the end, there will be 10 references. Fine. And second one is numbered referencing style where you make use of a number. Instead of giving the name of the author and year of publication, you just write number either in bracket or you give it in a superscript form. For example, this is a quotation, I give number two. If this is a, a paraphrasing, for example, I'll give three, five to seven. Even several sources can be so quoted. So here, instead of author's initial name and year of publication, here we are making use of numbers in brackets or we make use of superscripts. In that case, the references, what you are going to present at the end of your research paper, should have all the references in the order in which they appeared in your research paper. See, how do you do? You give number one, number two, number three, number four, number five in your research paper. The same order, all the references are to be given. For example, this is a style of Vancouver, where all the items are listed in the same order of appearance. Fine. And thirdly, even we have sometimes we have a kind of thing called a footnote. After giving a superscript, see for example, I have used a quotation here. I have given superscript one. The same page at the bottom of the page, you give you draw a line, you give the same superscript number, and you give full reference to a particular source in the first page or wherever whichever page you have uh, had that particular uh, footprint. Fine. Footnote style. So a yeah, question comes here. Sir, uh, I have given a reference in the footnote. Shall I have to repeat the same in the references? Of course, of course. So you have borrowed an idea from a particular source. The source should be mentioned in the uh, particular page as a footnote. And the same reference should appear in the bibliography also. For example, here I have given Cambridge style. All the items are given in the alphabetical order. Fine. So, so far, I had told you the three different methods. One is either you use uh, author date system or use numbers and brackets or superscripts or use footnotes. There are three different methods of acknowledging a source in the text itself. Fine. Then there is something called a secondary citation. For example, 
you got an idea or a method or a methodology or a finding for a particular paper but actually for example uh, ramasamy did a research and found some important findings you want to quote these research findings in your paper but unfortunately you didn't get ramasamy's paper fine and one mr kandasamy he has written a paper and he has quoted that ramasamy found out all these things fine it's very simple i what i got is only kandasamy's paper where i found the findings of ramasamy given there but i didn't get ramasamy's paper i want to quote it how to quote it that is what we call as secondary citation you can see here for example results from ram study actually ram is a original researcher who did a research in 1995 but i didn't get ram's paper i got this information only from arvin so i say cited in arvin right so this way you can give even second citation also fine suppose you feel that uh, same point is suggested by same item is suggested by same concept the same way same method it was discussed in two or three uh, references what you can do is that after giving that particular paraphrasing or quotation not quotation paraphrasing a summary you can give all the sources either in the alphabetical order or in the chronological chronological order of year of publication even that is possible fine and whether you are using a direct quotation or you are using a paraphrase you are using a summary that means direct quotation is a direct quote and paraphrasing and summary they belong to indirect quote whatever you use you have to see that these items appear in your paper in a proper manner okay for example let me tell you how to show all these things in your research paper if it is a quotation you give the quotation give the name of the person year and page number if it is a paraphrasing you give year of uh, the name of the author and uh, year of publication if you are following author date system this is somebody same point if it is given as a direct quotation if it is a paraphrase if it is somebody what is to be how is to be given then uh, direct quotations whenever you have a direct quotation see that you copy it exactly you are not changing any word you are not changing any order you are not changing any spelling you are not changing any punctuation fine you are not supposed to do anything for example sir i have got a very long quotation i don't need this i want a sentence and i don't need uh, the following 10 words and then i want the remaining things in that case what you can do is that you can make use of three ellipses within bracket three ellipses you can use so that so that sir i have taken a quotation from a source but i have omitted few words in between to show that you can make use of this ellipses fine and secondly sir uh, uh, maybe i have got a quote uh, it has got a word which a lexicon word uh, which a very very old word and uh, the word is the words present meaning is not in many one of us so i want to give the meaning of that particular word when i can i give yes you can give fine see here is the quotation in the quotation they have given a square bracket in the square brackets the author has given the meaning of this particular sentence so if at all you want to incorporate you want to add your own meaning to a particular sentence or a word of a quotation you can include that within the square brackets fine and thirdly sir uh, i had taken a quotation i want using it as such but i feel that the quotation doesn't fit into my style of my the con context may make few grammatical uh, changes in it yes you can do how to do that this way. for example they say nourish your soul but actually i want to have it as her soul So what I do is that instead of your soul, I just put the hair soul in square bracket. Fine. So in this way, these are the few things you can remember when you want to incorporate exact quotations as part of your research paper. Then comes paraphrasing. Please understand, paraphrasing means taking others' ideas and conveying it uh, uh, in your own words without uh, having any damage to the meaning of the sentence. Whatever context the author has given, the same context. In the same meaning, you should present it in your research paper. Fine. How to do that? You can make use of synonyms. Help. You can use assist. Instead of construct, you can use build. Make. You have to make use of some synonyms. And sometimes you need to change the word form. For example, accountants are expected to know tax laws. This can be restructured a different way. You can change the word form. And even you can change a structural sentence, maybe from transformative to affirmative, 
or affirmative to exclamatory or active voice to passive voice. You can change the structure of a sentence. Fine. And sometimes you take quotation, you read, understand, and you expand it and you define it. Okay? This way you can also do it. Fine. And these are the four ways of paraphrasing. You take others from ideas. You use synonyms, you change the word forms, you change structure of sentence, you expand and define, and these are the ways you can paraphrase the ideas of others in your research paper. Then comes summarizing. When you want to summarize, what you need to do is that, first you read the entire article for which you want to give a summary in your research paper. You have a gist, go through the entire things. Identify all the main points, maybe you may underline it or you may just crash it. And make a note of all the important points as a form of uh, note taking. And whatever notes you have taken, and notes should be presented as somebody using your own uh, word, your own style of writing. You read it again and again to make it better and include reference. Fine. And this is about uh, uh, integrating quotations. Many times, what happens is that we have these uh, direct quotations or paraphrasing or summarizing. Many a time, these items taken from others are just left, just thrown, just inserted somewhere without integrating them into our research work. Please remember, whenever you take others' ideas, you need to view, you need to integrate, you need to incorporate others' findings at a part of your research so that it looks very logical. You need not just throw the quotes of others in your research paper so that those quotations look like our friend in your research paper. So you should know exactly how to integrate the quotations in your research work. See, you can introduce a quotation with a complete sentence. You give a complete sentence and then you give a quotation. Or you give a introduction phrase, a small phrase, and then you give a quotation. Or you make use of the conjunction called that and you can add the quotation. Or you can make the quotation get viewed as a part and parcel of your uh, research piece of writing. So in all the four ways, you can integrate the short quotations as a part of your research work. Then, how to integrate the uh, longer quotations? As I told you, very important thing. First of all, before you add this particular uh, um, quotation of others, you should to introduce the quotation. See, I am going to give a quotation that is given by so-and-so. Then you give the quotation in the intended form. And then you have to give a link to your argument. To what extent your quotation that you reproduced above has got a link to your findings or your suggestions or your arguments. So you have to link this particular quotation to your research work. Fine. This is how you have to integrate the quotations into a part of your research work. Fine. Then when you want to include uh, indirect quotations, Okay, that's about that quotations. When you want to include indirect quotation, maybe paraphrasing or summarizing, basically they have two different methods of integrating indirect quotations as a part of your research work. Okay, one is author prominent paraphrasing, and second is information prominent paraphrasing. Fine. If it is an author prominent, it means that you want to give importance to that particular author in your research work. Okay. What you have taken from other is not important, but from whom you have taken is very important. If you feel so, then you write the name of the author first. Mary argues that according to Meloni. So you the name of the author first and then give the ideas what you have taken from others. And in the information prominent paraphrases, information is important. The person who has given this information is not so important. So first you give the idea. At the end of the paraphrasing or summary, you give the name of the person or page number or year and, and so on and so of others as well. Fine. So, either you follow author prominent paraphrasing or information prominent paraphrasing. It depends on your research ideas. Fine. And when you are uh, integrating these kinds of uh, quotations, see that you are using many number of different kinds of words. Please don't say that Ramasami says, Kandasami says, Munisami says, X says, Y says. No. So you have to read the feelings of other researcher and you have to say whether you are, uh, uh, for example, I say that uh, uh, Ramasami argues, Ramasami climbs, Ramasami debates, Ramasami uh, disagrees with. 
so this kind of words will give a better understanding of how you understand how you have understood and how you have incorporated others findings as a part of your research paper fine so these are the few words you can use instead of simply using stated or say you can say argued commented convinced described disputed instructed proposed persuaded examined debated so these are few uh, uh, words which you can use when you are uh, uh, trying to integrate the indirect citations the part of your uh, research work fine the question comes here sir you have uh, uh, taught us that uh, it is a must that we have to acknowledge the sources to acknowledge the sources i should do two things one is i should prepare in text citation and i should prepare a list of references or bibliography or work cited at the end of my paper these two things are to be done as far as in text citation is concerned it can be either author date system or it can be a number based system fine and how can i prepare these things to help you to prepare both in text citations and the list of references uh, we have the world has developed a good number of citation styles what is citation style it's nothing but a standard way of acknowledging others standard way of citing others you have taken a research paper or a book chapter or a conference paper or a interview or a youtube video or a small newspaper or a oral communication or a blog post or uh, maybe something like instagram flickr photo you have taken something from others and you want to cite them you want to acknowledge them you want to thank that yes i have borrowed from others how to do that we have a standard method of doing it that's what we call as citation style and how many citation styles are there you will not believe there are more than 9500 citation styles and the very popular ones are maybe ap american psychology association and we have chicago style we have mla modern language association we have vancouver style nature style i triple e style probian style and many 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 such styles are there and you need to decide and follow any one style for preparing your research paper if the particular journal tells that you have to follow this particular style you follow what for example you want to publish a paper in a particular journal the journal says that you have to prepare your references in apa you go for apa sometimes the journal may have their own uh, individual their own uh, uh, referencing system if it is so then you have to follow you have to read the guidance given according you have to prepare the references it's fine now how to prepare these citations there are different methods one is everybody has ms word that will help us to prepare uh, both in text citations and uh, a list of references or secondly you can go for some uh, online bibliography generators just go there you give the required things the online software web page will prepare in text citation will prepare reference and give and thirdly there are some softwares which you can download freely available open source softwares are there you can download the softwares and keep in the desktop and you can uh, prepare in text citations and list of references so these are three possible methods of uh, uh, preparing in text citations and references ms word i mean i'll tell you later on and online free online citation tools we have easy bib is a very good uh, online tool we have pibme.org this is a good citationmachine.net you can prepare your in text citations and references in apa style mla style chicago and many more and many more we have sitefast.com like there are many many softwares and many online tools are there now apart from these we have a very very specialized application softwares which are freely available that will help you to collect the references to prepare the references to store the references and to reproduce the references in any of the styles to copy and paste the references to import or export the references to share the references So you can do all these kinds of things with regard to references using the so-called uh, reference management tools or softwares. For example, we have EndNote.com, a beautiful uh, software, and we have Sotero, the wonderful uh, software which you can download a single EXE file. You can download, you can uh, make use of it. Then we have Kizwa.com, we have Japref.org, and we have Mendeley, very very popular uh, Mendeley.com. We have desktop version for Mendeley too. And, uh, and these are the few methods of preparing index citations and references. So thank you so much, friends, for having watched my presentation for such a long time. And this is a theoretical part of uh, reference management system.
I'll come back to you with a with a practical demonstration of uh, uh, yeah, uh, software for generating in-text citations and uh, list of references. Till then, bye. Thanks so much. Bye.